Take a look at your smartphone. The chances are very high that the glass covering the front and back of your phone is made by a company called Corning. Corning makes Gorilla Glass, and since the 2007 launch of the original iPhone, it has dominated the smartphone industry, to the point that pretty much every phone has some form of Gorilla Glass on it. Corning is a notoriously secretive company, but we had the opportunity to take a tour of their flagship R&D facility, where we saw how Gorilla Glass is made and learn about how Corning tests the glass's durability. One of the first things we got to do was check out the furnaces where Corning melts down the materials that make up Gorilla Glass. This was a wild experience. The molten glass is the hottest thing I've ever been near. 1,650 degrees Celsius, or 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter than magma. So yeah, very hot. And when it comes out of the furnace, it's so bright that you can't look directly at it without protective shaded glasses. But how does this molten glass then become, well, actual glass? Corning uses a proprietary manufacturing process called the fusion process for this. Basically, the raw materials get melted down in a giant furnace, similar to what we saw at the R&D facility, but on a massive scale. That molten glass is then fed into a chamber. The chamber pushes out the molten glass into a unique structure called the isopipe, which uses gravity to fuse the two flows into one sheet of glass. This sheet then cools in midair and eventually becomes a solid sheet of clear glass. But how does Corning know that the glass it just made will be durable enough to survive as smartphone glass. That's where the Gorilla Glass Reliability Lab comes into play. This is where Corning does whatever it can to break the glass it creates by putting it through various torture tests. These tests are designed to mimic real life situations that you might find yourself in with your smartphone. Before I get into all that though, let me show you just how strong Gorilla Glass actually is. For this scratch test, one side is polycarbonate or plastic. The other side is Gorilla Glass. As you can see, the key easily destroys the polycarbonate with deep gouges, but the Gorilla Glass comes away unscathed. A more precise and scientific test is this contraption that the Corning team lovingly calls the ScratchBot. This tests how well your phone glass survives scratches. The way it works is that the tip of each stem has sandpaper on it. The stems all have weights on them, so there's a precise amount of pressure on each pane of glass. You then pull the handle down, which rubs the sandpaper against the glass at an exact level of pressure. As you can see, this pane of competitive glass and one kilogram of pressure got a nice healthy scratch on it. This pane of Gorilla Armor, the same you'll find on a Galaxy S24 Ultra, wasn't scratched at all with the same one kilogram of pressure. But Check this out. Gorilla Armor also survived a whopping four kilograms of pressure without a scratch to be seen. So yeah, if you've got a Galaxy S24 Ultra, your glass probably doesn't have many scratches. Another fun test is the pen push. This tests how much pressure you can put on a piece of glass that has a flaw in it. All three panels here are the same thickness and have the same flaw in the middle. When I pushed as hard as I could on the first pane, which is soda lime, it shattered easily. The second pane, which is soda lime glass chemically strengthened similar to the way Gorilla Glass is, took a bit more force to shatter, but it still shattered. The Gorilla Glass though, I simply could not shatter. I even used two hands and pushed with all my might, but it would not break. So why did this happen? Imagine you're pulling from both sides of a piece of paper. If the paper is in good shape, it won't tear very easily. But if you introduce a flaw to the paper, like a small tear in the middle, suddenly the paper tears much more easily. In the case of Gorilla Glass, the chemical strengthening would be similar to someone holding your hands back, preventing you from easily tearing the paper at all. Flaw or no flaw. Here's a test for a typical smartphone use case. What happens when you put your phone in a bag or purse? This test uses everyday objects that you might find in a bag, including coins, keys, a nail file, a hairbrush, and more. Everything goes into this bottle and then testers put a piece of glass in and roll it and see what happens as the objects inside bash away at it. The team uses a machine for this, but you get the gist of what it does for me turning it here. This fun machine is called the Slapper, and its purpose is to mimic dropping your smartphone. When you drop your phone, the glass doesn't stay perfectly flat, but curves to respond to the impact of the drop. So 
The glass in the slapper is purposely curved to mimic this. And then you can just drop it down against the metal base covered in sandpaper to mimic an intense drop on something like asphalt. As you can see, the non-Gorilla Glass example shattered easily, even without putting the slapper all the way up. But when you do it with Gorilla Glass, even from the top with a much longer arm, the slapper doesn't break it at all. To really send the point home, the Corning team took out the Mega Slapper, which is crazy tall. It also doesn't break the glass, even with the massive amount of force gravity creates with this machine. For more precise drop tests, Corning has the Device Drop Tower. This is a very tall machine that will drop phones at the speed of gravity and precisely hit an exact spot on the floor. High-speed cameras at the bottom film the impact from multiple angles so the team can closely analyze what happens. For this demo, Corning used two different mock devices, which it calls pucks. One is made of 2D glass and reminded me of an iPhone from a long time ago with weighted insides to closely mimic a real phone's weight. This other puck used 3D glass, which is reminiscent of a OnePlus phone from yesteryear with curved glass all around it. Watching the phones fall from various heights was pretty cool to see, especially since Gorilla Glass survived each time. We didn't get to see it on this trip, but Corning has shelves of other materials for these drop tests, including actual asphalt, concrete, granite, stainless steel, carpet, laminate flooring, and other things you might drop your phone onto. What was so wild about this visit was learning just how old Corning is. The company has been making glass-based products for nearly 175 years. In fact, 2026 will be the company's 175th birthday. The R&D lab we visited in the town of Corning that the company got its name from is massive, with 800 labs, 2,000 employees, and 2 million square feet of space. I know we Android fans think of Corning as a smartphone glass maker, but the company has done way more than that. The first Edison light bulb used Corning glass, and the earliest TV tubes did too. There are over 5 billion kilometers of fiber optic cabling around the world, also made by Corning. And even the space shuttle's windows come from Corning. Anyway, the next time you use your phone, think about how much work went into making just the glass that covers it. Also, even though these torture tests look like fun, please don't go intentionally dropping your phone on concrete to test out Corning's quality. The glass is strong, but not unbreakable after all. See you all later.